Good. Yo, Hello. what's good? We're live. We're live again. Yeah. Are we live? Uh, not we not are like live. live. We're not live, but, but we'll be oh, okay. like you, recording. I got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah. What's up, dude? Treading Water Podcast. Thanks for tuning in again. Guys, yeah, we're here. And we're here in sunglasses. Yeah. Back in full force. Because Hershey and the Keys said they, that you yeah. can't wear sunglasses they, on the air. They, they didn't like, uh, I don't know, they were like ripping on our vibe. That They're, one episode that we did the sunglasses. Yeah, and then they and then they put on sunglasses and they look like shit. Yeah, they look like they look terrible. <laughs> they look terrible. They put on the backwards hats and everything. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, that's cool. <clears throat> the one difference is that me and Hugh get way more pussy than you both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I, I wanted to fuck both of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. And today I would enjoy that too. Dude, Mick's hand, look how handsome Mick is. Yeah. Too. Today, we have a guest. This guy is all over the country. We've got the pleasure of knowing him. He headlines all yeah, over. Dude. We've had the pleasure of knowing him for years now. And he's here today, and we're fucking pumped. Thanks, yeah. lads. Yeah. Congratulations on the new show, by the way. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. It takes a while, usually, for people to find their groove on a new podcast. And I think you lads hit it right at the gate. So congratulations. Thank you, man. Oh, Give so it up right it. now yeah. for Mr. Mick Thomas. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. That's nice of you. Thank, Thank you for Thank coming you. out, dude. Thanks for having me. And he's rocking the sunglasses. Yeah. Of course I am. <laughs> Always. Solidarity. Always. Yeah. Solidarity. This is weird. I feel I, I sound and look like I'm hungover, but I'm just not. Yeah, same. No, I don't know what's going on. It's I think it just happens sometimes. Yeah, you look like that frat kid that jumped off the ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and got eaten by a shark. Oh, I, I that happened recently, right? Yeah, last week, I think. Last week. Some yeah. fucking idiot. Wait, he, what? He got like dared to jump off the ship or something? He didn't dare it. I, I don't want to step on Tim Dillon's podcast, but he covered it. Oh, you, you yeah. know that you don't want to accidentally repeat somebody. But he was basically, you know, the way, like young people want to have that moment. Yeah. Like, look how cool I am, bro. Or you're crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Cr- oh, Travis, he's crazy, man. Yeah. Like, is he? <laughs> right? And then it's just, he's one of those guys who jumped off a cruise ship into shark infested water oh, and the sharks ate him. Shit. They, oh, they like, actually ate him? Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to ridicule him? <laughs> 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 ah, nice flip flop, fag. <laughs> Go back to shore, yeah. pussy. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. shark. The sharks. They didn't like his business idea. No, they <laughs> do. Yeah, they do what sharks do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, th- I'm actually uh, surprised because usually when, if you like jump off like a cruise ship, the what happens is you get sucked right into the fucking engines. Well, know? I think it's parked at some shitty rented off island. Oh, I could be wrong. Okay, you know right. the way like car- uh, the carnival. Yeah, Carnival, Carnival will rent out an yeah. island for the first half of the day, and then Princess Royal Caribbean comes in and gets the second half of the day. Right. And the locals working for nothing will turn up, and then fat Americans will all just waddle down the beach yeah. Yeah. with flip flops and shitty tattoos yeah. <laughs> and just shit on their lifestyle. Good oh, um, man, I feel called out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you want a shout tooth necklace? You're like, uh, yeah, I got this from the indigenous people yeah, I'm of a, Barbados. I'm going to buy it for this girl I just met. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm ripping on a shark tooth necklace right now. Are but you wearing it? Are you no. It? Oh, okay. But if you got me drunk on a cruise, I'd be like, I'm going to rock this at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's the thing. That's gonna, the thing. I'm going to go home and wear this on stage. And the girl gets like the one braid with like the Jamaican beads in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude, I got a I got a bunch of like linen pants just to be like a like a vacation douche. Uh, good. Yo, those good. Are, they, they feel great. Those are good boner pants. Oh, they are not good boner no, pants. No, man. They're well, not bad. like it feels no. good. You no, roll yeah. into the Hamptons looking good in those. Nobody would give a shit. Nobody would stop you. Yeah. Now you look like garbage. But yeah. if you wore those linen pants. Yeah, you, you can't. You can't like really wear them around like Levittown. I've worn. Oh no, <laughs> Levittown people <laughs> fucking crush you. Even yeah, Merrick people. Yeah. People crush put you. out their Newports on your fucking pants. Yeah, Even most Ma- of Long Island is like that. Yeah, yeah. but um, it, my mom was like, "Oh, you should wear them on stage." I was like, "I'm not fucking wearing linen pants on stage." Are you kidding? Why me? Why not though? That's what I no? say. Why yeah. not? Why? Where the fuck are you comfortable in? You think I should do them next? Where are you comfortable in? I guarantee you. Here's the thing: to certain people. Uh, that just look good in anything, mm. right? And I, I, I think you could fit into that category. You could pull yeah. that off. Thank you. I you could walk in. You know what it is? You've got one of those fucking looks that you walk in and you go, didn't he always wear linen pants? Yeah. Like, <laughs> nobody would. It's like no. if you came in with a beard. If you came in with a beard, people like, you'd be like, hey, guys, check out the beard. Like, you always had a beard. You know what I mean? Like, that's how... <laughs> Like, Dude, he, was always, he was always a linen pants guy. Yeah. <laughs> remember, do you remember last February we said, "Do what you're wearing that linen pants for? Your nuts must be freezing." And he's just like, "Nope, I like getting boners in the cold." Yeah, hey, man, that's <laughs> it. Go for it. I said, "Wear it." Fuck it, you bought them. Dude, yeah, let, you know it, it's it's like I think we all three of us we fall into this category, and it's been blowing up like crazy because of uh, Matt Rife. 
Okay. I, you've been seeing all the hate that Matt Rife's been getting just yeah. because he took his shirt off on his fucking on his poster? on his like tour announcement. Like, you know, cool. if you look like that, then do it. Listen. And there's just been like a lot of general hate for like a male comedian kind of making it. Who's good looking? Who's good looking? Yeah, I don't hate him at all. I don't know the guy. Uh, I know a lot of the, the before the clips. shirt came off. Before the shirt came off, a lot of people comics were complaining that, and I see the complaint, but it doesn't bother me, right? Because yeah. you're you're your own. You're your own vessel. You're your own fucking brand. However you want to be, Travis, if you want to be Hugh, you know, whatever fucking comedy Mick is going to do. But a lot of people are pissed that he got famous from crowd work. Right. Now, is that his fault? No. Right? Because, you, you you know, there was a time where you got to, you just do material. You don't put your material online. Yeah, Because yeah. then you're going to burn it. I put nothing up but a joke up every day. Like, yeah. one of some of my material. Because I think of, you know what? You know what, lads? I'll write another one. You soft motherfuckers. <laughs> you weak fuckers yes. out there who are afraid to put up one of yes. your favorite bi- Dude, I can't put my closer up. I'll never get booked at the chuckle fuck <laughs> in Cincinnati now. Because they saw my bit about... The fucking plastic furniture on the couch. Oh, you know what I mean? God. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm like, dude, put your shit on <laughs> line. Oh. Don't be afraid of it, you fucking weak motherfucker. And, uh, you know, if, if oh, like, someone will steal my shit, trust me, nobody is stealing your shit. Yeah. I know for a fact they're not. And if they are, <laughs> write a new bit, motherfucker, and right. be a man and smack the fuck out of that guy. Burn the fucking right. weak. I love oh. this. Yeah, write it. Like, write. Yeah, like, that's the job is to write. Yes. Yeah, I definitely don't think if you put something up, you burn it. If anything, I think you solidify it because then if it goes viral it's like no that's that guy's joke yeah like that's that yeah. guy's fucking thing like my dog bit like the one and i wrote it as just just a fuck around i was in uh i was in where was i dublin ohio and i was backstage that's ballsy of dublin ohio yeah, t- yeah. it's like paris texas <laughs> <laughs> it, it must be weird as an <laughs> irish guy going to dublin ohio no it's a huge irish section so they took oh, the okay. name as an honor so think, i did uh, i did the irish right. festival think, out there think of how many people turn around it's like we were in dublin ohio <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> well you thought they were going to drive there anyway <laughs> <laughs> like, you thought they were going to leave philly <laughs> yeah, you fucking said we were going to drive here <laughs> boy sucks <laughs> So, but I, I fucked around with a bit and I, I, I did it online. It was the, the, the dog, I know the dog guy. That's what I'm known as now, which I never wanted to be like a fucking Vic D. Potato guy. Yeah, like, oh, the bread and milk guy. Bread and milk guy. You know what yeah. I mean? And I put this one joke, I recorded it that night, the same night I wrote it. And I put it out and it's got between all the platforms, it's got over 300 million views. Holy shit. And it's like, I would go do it and I would start doing it in the city and it would like, it would, like it would bomb. It started to bomb out of nowhere. I was like, well, what is this bombing? Because yeah, every motherfucker has seen it. Yeah. And I did it. The last time I did it was in Chicago, Zanies. And as I did it, I, t- I said that bit about, about, uh, my, I got to the part about my dad, and 99.9% of the time, the audience are silent. That's how the joke works. And all of a sudden, this one guy deliberately goes, oh, uh, right, yeah, <laughs> and killed the joke. Yeah. He killed, he murdered him. I was like, you know what, that's it. And then he, his wife wrote to me on Facebook, we loved you, and oh, yeah, it was nice to meet you. And he goes, I'd like to meet you next time. And he goes, oh, we already met after the show. My husband was the one that ruined your joke. I was like, cool, yeah. cool. And oh, you're still with God. him? That's See, your character, yeah, too. Jesus. See, if it was Peter Bells and that happened to him, he's like, sick. I can't wait to tell this joke again when I'm 80. Yeah, no, no, you got to get rid of your <laughs> shit, man. If nobody's heard it, I get it. Yeah. I, I get it, but man, like all these comics out there that that li- and i've got one or two three or four crowd work clips on my page too right because just i was you know, bored one the, day and the I algorithm's like thirsty for it yeah, yeah you know? but like who like who wants to go see like I, my, my favorite comedian was billy Connolly, and it was never like it was never like uh what's your favorite uh, billy Connolly bit when he asked the couple how long they were married for oh, and the yeah, guy yeah. said 15 but the wife said 16 uh-huh. and then he walked away from the mic in shock <laughs> <laughs> like like, like I, I, I've seen Matt Rife do it again. Not again. I'm, sh- I'm sure the guy's capitalizing on. It's nothing against him, man. Yeah. And, and he's got a great stage presence. And same with anybody. I could name a bunch of guys who've been successful from stealing jokes. I didn't say yeah. Matt Rife did. And I still wish him well. I still, you know, they're bragging pictures by their house. Go for you, man. Your kids get to grow up in a nice house. That's awesome. Yeah. So I don't have hate for these people. But like I saw Matt Rife do it one time. Do, do, are you in a blue shirt, bro? And like dropping the mic, he couldn't believe the guy was wearing a blue shirt. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and, and I, okay, is that that's <laughs> right. is that who? 
you are. My one criticism about Rife is his voice changes when he talks to black people. Yeah, but <laughs> we're all, we're all, we're all guilty of that. Though. We all we all do that. Yeah, Rife and I were shacks, man. And for some reason, when I talk, <laughs> if I'm in the city talking to black comics, you, like, you, you know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you want to assimilate. He's like, he, all of a sudden, he's just like, dog, come on, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. just like, right. <laughs> fuck, I don't. That, does, that <laughs> doesn't bother me because I think we we all do it. Yeah, you know what I mean, I think I mean like yeah, I think you like you know. Like I was doing mics last night. There was black people in the, at like the second mic, and, yeah. I, and I was like telling a joke. Comics or like, audience members? Uh, one was an audience member. One was a comic. Okay. But, it, but still, I was so like two black people. <laughs> 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 I like the way Travis made it seem he was at the Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm standing there, right? With this C. Mean, a C. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it wasn't already <laughs> biblical, I would have named it the Black Sea. That's and it's just full of them. Just full of them. Sea of from, Africans. Yeah, from wall to wall. Oh, sure, to fucking manager. You couldn't turn around without bumping into one of them. And I didn't care. Because I'm, you know me, I'm a man of the people. I don't see color. I just went out there and I dropped, I dropped the N-word because they know me. They yeah, know it's, the it's the, the T-Dog, <laughs> guys. What are you mad about? They know I'm a knock-around guy. <laughs> and instead, he was at an open mic. Yeah. And some guy, at one we were a black comic and then a, guy, a black guy came out on a bike who was delivering Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, so now these black guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at the sea of Nigerian refugees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Bob Geldof. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just out there. We want your money. We want your m- Queen are going to be playing soon. Pick up the phone and send us your fucking money. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I did yeah, oh like I did. It, it was like it wasn't like a yo what up but it was like a little dude like yeah a yeah little, little notch my handshakes become more dancier oh, oh yeah you know what I mean? <laughs> like when I see them like oh, I'll, I, I mess I up everyone I mess no, up I usually do that like the, the thing and I bring in for a hug yeah. if, I, if I genuinely know you right if not I'll be like hey dude man whatever you know what I mean like because I'm starting to get introduced to a lot of new comics that I never knew before yeah. and then some some old some new friends I get to see again but like but when I see my black friends that I know I get a lot looser yeah you know what okay. I mean I get a lot looser the handshake I add on an extra step yeah <laughs> like I so keep w- I keep that one in my back pocket in case what I, what I do I always bring it in because I'm yeah. just a bro idiot yeah but like I'll break like when I'm handshaking a black guy I'll be like this that Bring it in. Check your I, wallet. And then I do some. <laughs> Check <laughs> your wallet. <laughs> hey, this is my. This is how I end up. Hey, yeah, my watch yeah, is yeah, gone. Yeah, my it. watch is gone. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I do this, that, bring it in. Yeah. And then after, I'm like. Yeah, I have to have a get out one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, it's like a second line of. You gotta whoop, do the whoop. yeah, yeah, yeah. Snap and the finger guns. Oh, the, the guns. That's a cool one. Like yeah, I don't know if you know cool if you know one. Nico White, one yeah, of the yeah. funniest just, guys, man. I was, just, I was just with him last weekend. Is that the guy? <laughs> no, Nico's one of the funniest guys. One of the kindest guys ever. He is. But when I say hello to him, man, he will he adds extra layers on. But for some reason. It's like, you, you know when you go parachuting and you're strapped to somebody, yeah. right? Oh, That's yeah, for yeah. shaking hands. Yeah. You're like, Nico's the guy. I, oh, I got you. Okay. I got you. And you're like, I'm doing it. I'm oh, doing it. That's got to be like a cool moment. Yeah. Like I, yeah. right, It's like riding a bike with training wheels. Like, I'm doing it, yeah. Dad. Like, he's, I'm um, doing all of the things. And Dude, he's, I, I had a black guy compliment me on my sneakers once. I'm ooh. still talking about it. It was like two years ago. Nice. That's big. You know? I'm not a sneaker and guy, N- but N- I know that's a whole Nico's, uh, Nico's like a tall, skinny dude, so it's even cool. I feel like when they're tall and skinny, it's even like, Yo, what's up, dude? You yeah. know what I like about Nico, and there's a lot of guys like that. And <clears> I don't I don't mean black people, but I mean like anyone who does that, I'm very impressed with. When you ask him a question, they don't answer right away. They take a moment to like, I want to think about what you yeah. just said. And then I'm going to answer. Um, he's a, a, he's a thinker. He's fucking like, cool people like that, man. Nico's one of those guys. Nico's yeah. just such a real dude. And it's like, I've known him for so long. And uh, it was great to see him because I haven't seen him in a while. And it was just, he's like, oh, what's up? Like, you know, like, you know those people like you don't see for a while. And then when you do see him, you pick back up right where you left off. Right. Yeah. I, I truly appreciate that quality in a person. Yeah. I, I, I like that when I see that in someone. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Because some, sometimes when you like get away from people for a while, then they get like weird. They're like, oh, I haven't seen this person. They don't yeah. fucking hit me up. You know? And he and has hit you. Like, Did sour. I like you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of really? like. Really? I like you. You question <laughs> your friendship, you know? 
Yeah, or you could just stop doing drugs and then you'll see someone you're like, well, I actually really don't like you. Yeah, 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 yeah you owe yeah. me money, I think. That's a, yeah. str- <laughs> <laughs> That's a strange I do believe one. you owe me money. Yo, go back to bits. I wanted to ask you a question. So you were talking about like, yo, you had a bit and then it just it just started bombing. Yeah. But then you knew why. It was because, you know, like people knew. The it. audience knew it yeah. was coming. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, it became kind of like a like a famous bit. What um, take that equation out? Like your bit is not famous. Say you're doing something and it's just murdering. Yeah. But then after like a month or two of saying it, it just starts losing steam. Why do you think that is? I think you start, and I do. I'm guilty of this, and I'm trying to be more conscious of it. I'm trying to change it, but you have lost the excitement in delivering so, it. I, that's what I was going to say. You yeah. don't believe in it anymore. And if you don't believe in it anymore, how are you going to expect them to believe in it? Right. Yeah, very true. You know, because uh, I, I, you know, I got into recovery in like 2012, and then I started writing a lot of recovery bits. And now, you know, fucking 2023, it's like 11 years later, I'm sick of talking about drugs, yeah. you know, and just yeah, being yeah, an addict yeah. in general. Like I, like, I generally don't even want to be like an addict, like a recovering addict. So it's like I don't want to talk about it anymore. So some of my recovery bits like really lost their luster because like I was like not only like I don't know if bored's the right word, but it was just like I I'm just like sick to death talking about this. I want to I want I like I don't want it to just be like oh like the recovery comic like you said like the dog guy you yeah know? like yeah. I don't want to just be that person. So I kind of like like tried to come away from it and like you know because like it's you get to like you write what you know you know. So it's like when I was just doing drugs, it was all I was writing about. But now it's like. I want to write about other things and like challenge myself a little bit more. And like, those are the bits that started hitting more and I was more excited to do them. And I think the audience feels that. Yeah. But if you grow, like if you, even if your life changes as a person, right? Like if you, like we all know those angry comics, right? Yes. They go on stage oh, yeah. and fucking scream and yell. And that's great. Yeah. But I saw you yell at that two years ago. Are you still angry at it? Yeah. Like, yeah is that, okay. Are you still mad about that? Cause if you are good, good for you, man, you need help, but also congratulations on you have a bit that's killing. But if you're not that angry at it anymore, because we all change, we grow as humans. Like if yeah. you're, you're, you're like you're a recovering addict. Uh, so you're when you were writing jokes before you were getting help or, or decided to take change your life, where you are as a person is different than where you are now. And you can't go back and deliver those jokes with, with new new Hugh Murray. Can't go back and tell old Hugh Murray's jokes. Right. You just can't unless there's something like it's a silly. Like we all come up with those jokes that. They don't belong anywhere in our set, but you just came up with it because it's funny and yeah. you know it's a quick laugh. Those ones, throw in, sure. But if you're going to move on from it, then fucking move on for it. And that's why I always say, man, there's nothing wrong with just getting the camera, recording that bit, and fucking if you don't ever want to return to it, then just leave it up there. Just leave it there. Let it let it die in the ether, and it's a representation of who you are. And like I'll do, I did a brand new joke. It's one of my biggest laughs now. I did it once. I recorded it and put it up online, and I made it better. I made it stronger. Mm. So now if you want to see the bit, you go see it, but it's not. It's not the same. It's yeah. not a bit. Now it's fu- it's fucking murder. But eventually right. I'll go. Eh, it's, I'm I was going to I was going to say. So then there's the flip side to that because then there's things that like, like this crazy thing happened to me when I was you know however old, and I it was just a, it was a it was like a wild story. So I wrote the story down because I knew like this is going to be something you can tell on stage. This is fucking mm-hmm. this is crazy. I don't even know how this happened to me, but I wrote it down. And as I was writing it, I knew I wasn't good enough of a comic at the time to right. perform it yeah and you know i was throwing up at the wall throwing up the, or throwing up the wall and it's really just not quite hitting what i know it can yeah and then so i'm like how about this how about you put it to the back of your book and you develop more as a comic and then you come back to it like three years later and i've done that with some of my stories some of my bits and and they're just hitting out because i know how to fucking hit it now. yeah there's a, there is a thing called uh, such a thing called um comedic maturity yeah. And you could tell a story or something that you just it could be, let's say, edgy air quotes, right? It could be yeah. edgy, but you didn't have the confidence to deliver it. So when you go, if you deliver something that you think the audience are going to, oh shit, here we go. Yeah. Is he going to say this? You better believe that you're saying it. Yeah. Like if you kind of like bite your nails and go, I don't know. You, in, insert this mm, word right. here. You better fucking, be, when they see you, they better go, like it or not. They you they better believe that you fucking better believe it. Yeah, you know you know, you know I mean? it's funny that you say that because I honestly I think when I was first starting out, Mick told me 
that like I'm like I had a joke and I was like, you know, I think it's really funny, but it's not working. And I think Mick told me like, I don't, you know, you may not just be a good enough comic to tell it yet. Yeah, yeah, man. And, and I, true, I think though. he was the one that that. And that's not meant as that. that's not meant it, as an insult. No, I, I have so many bits myself no. that now I'm going back and visit and go fuck. Like I remember I had this in my head. It was a great bit about 9/11. <clears throat> yeah, right. In my head, I'm saying that in my head, meaning right. it bombed on stage already. Like risky material. Yeah, and I, listen, I'm 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 doing comedy like 16 years, so I. I was like five years into it and the premise of the joke was i watched yeah. this documentary on 9 11 a lot of people don't i get a lot of this shit but a lot of people don't like i'm an american citizen and i'm one of those uh very very proud to be an american because I'm, I'm coming close in a few more years i'm coming close to being an american more than i was in ireland oh okay wow. right Holy so shit. i'm a very i'm very i am an irish citizen i'm from ireland i'm born and raised in ireland uh i i love ireland but I also love, I genuinely love America. And people go, you can't say this. I can say what the fuck I want. I am pro-military, right? <laughs> I can be pro-military. Why? Because I got two small kids that maybe one day want to grow up and be in the fucking military. And yeah. what am I going to do? You're not joining them because why? Why? What's the reason? You want them, right? you want them to be safety. But I can't want get my kids to not want to be in the military for some fucking dumb political reason. Yeah. So I genuinely love the country, right? I, 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 I do. So when I, when I was talking about this 9-11 bit, it came across... Not anti-American, but it was a documentary on the tower, and it was a documentary being told. Was a story being told by two people, the same story told from a different angle, and it was about a guy who was running down the stairs. I'm gonna, I'm not going to do the whole thing. And as he's running down the steps, he hears a knock on the door on the wall, right? And it's somebody trapped uh, uh, behind the desk on the other side of the wall. So he fucking punches through the wall. He looks down, and he looks up. He looks, he looks down, and he sees this guy trapped under a desk. Now it cuts to the other guy telling the same story and all of a sudden I bang on the wall and his fist comes through and like an angel he pulls me up so they're telling the same story back and back right Right. and he carried the guy out on his shoulders they run out and as they, they run out the building collapses behind them right and the guy so at the end of the story and the two, two guys are crying and again I'm telling you what happened I'm not doing the bit of course because the bit's yeah. a lot shorter than this um, and at the end of it he says he goes you know I, uh, I call this guy up every single day every morning I call this guy to tell him you're my angel you're my hero I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for you and every Saturday, I send them a gift basket yeah. since it happened, right? And that's like, exhausting. Right? So, but that's my point, right? So, it go, it co then it cuts to the guy, and the guy's like, yeah, he sends me, a, he calls me every day. Like, and, and, and all I said on stage was at the time, like the punchline was at the time, after I told that long-winded story, because I didn't have the comedic maturity yeah. to tell that story, make it shorter, make it more interesting, get my point across. And all of a was like, like, there's got to be a time where he looks at his phone and goes, not this fucking guy again. Like, you know what uh, I mean? Yeah, that's where right. I Right, because yeah, when my mother okay. calls, I'm like, oh, fuck, now what? I'm like, right? And that's my mother, right? Like and I'm like a bat. The like, fucking punchline. No, like no, no, dummy. but that's not the point, yeah. though. It's not, I'm not trying to do a bit here, so right. you could see, you can jump, but it's not ruining. Yeah. But then I'm like, and then I start talking about, like, you know, he gets a bat. Like, Dude, he probably hasn't seen his dog in seven years because, like, fucking moldy muffin <laughs> baskets around his apartment. Yeah. Like, cause, like, I, but anyway, so people took that, like, boo, whatever. Like, some people booed me off stage because right, right. maybe I didn't have the, the comedic maturity maturity to tell that story in a way yeah. like yeah. hey man this is fucking honest this is kind of true if you think about it like we've all got that call from somebody go oh, fuck me here we go yeah and then yeah. maybe it was anti it seemed like and it wasn't patriotic it was anti-american when really it wasn't but i didn't have the skill <clears throat> to tell that story it, well that to deliver it that that place on stage like when you jump into that world like to handle yourself in that space to deliver it right in that space yeah you do need to have i would say at least Five or six years on your belt. Yeah, uh, it depends on who you are. It depends it on who you are, but you know what are. I mean. Like, depends. Like, if you were a shit talker your whole life, then it's like you know. But I remember I was um like I was like I've I don't know before, I don't know how long I was into it, but I was like, why were you so much funnier in lunchrooms and at house parties and like after practice, like growing up, like and I was like was around many different groups of people and I would just make many different groups of people laugh as I was growing up, and I'm like, why do you think you were funnier? then than you are now like i had this moment like some years back and i was like because you knew like you knew it was gonna hit like in the back of your head you're like you knew it was gonna hit so you had no hesitation you just walked into it right it's so like then, that uh, so, confidence yeah. yeah so then i was like have that confidence try to find it try to hone it and try to focus on it and then deliver it out there which is harder easier said than done well the oh, problem yeah. the problem is why you don't you don't want it to, to bomb is because if you do something edgy you don't want the club to say now i don't give a fuck if you don't want to have me back right. based on a joke that bombed, then that's fine. Right. That's fine. And but it's also like, I think there's a level of uh, <clears throat> like that uh, need for the audience to like you. 
you know, where it's like you, you kind of get like a little scared and kind of diminishes your confidence a little bit because you're like, right. I, I, I hope they like me. Up front, you know, up, but like when you're with your friends, like uh, like after practice yeah. or fucking like in class or something, it's like you know they like you, so yeah. you have that confidence. Yeah, you I know? mean, especially like up front, I think like your first like few minutes of them, I mean, like some can disagree, but yeah, your set's gonna go drastically different or drastically easier. If they like you the first like three minutes, yeah, you know what I mean. If or or you can go on stage and you can open up with that fucking Hitler joke, right? Right. For whatever, yeah. And go, this is who I am, yeah, mm-hmm. right. And if you're confident enough in that, they're either going to go with you or not. But if you do four minutes, let's say you're doing a fifteen minute set and you're doing four minutes of hey, the traffic was terrible here today, and hey, what's the oh, deal with yeah. right? Whatever, and they go, we love this guy, he's hilarious. And then you make that that fucking that sharp right. Yeah, they're gonna go, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck, dude? <though? laughs> what? Hey. Go back to the traffic jam. What the hell did the Jews ever do to you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just take it easy on the yeah. Jews, oh, man. What are you oh, talking I, about, dude? My favorite thing. You're just talking about airline food. Yeah, what's the, what? <laughs> my, yeah, I know first class, and now all of a sudden abortions. Like my, what the fuck? My my favorite thing is uh, so one of my my wor- my Achilles heel of a crowd is like a sixty five year old yeah. white Republican yeah. like family crowd like we got a babysitter for this we want to Republicans hear- I correct you though Republicans are usually the best audience really? sadly I'm sorry if I upset well, people but they are because. I, I, I talked about this generated to somebody and this doesn't say anything about my political beliefs because I think all fucking politicians are scum left and right. Oh yeah. I truly Corrupt do. Corrupt fucks. I'm not saying people who believe the left are scum, people who believe the right are scum, but I'm about all those politicians, if you think they're out for you, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, I agree. 100%. But I, I find, like, I said this to somebody the other day, like, dude, do, do the people on the right have way more fun. Like they do, they, they do. Because they, they don't care about the environment, so it's all pickup trucks, jet skis, and 4 by 4s motorcycles. That's they true, do, right? Yeah. There's very li- very few liberals on a they motorcycle. Do. So let, let's, yeah. let's, let's leave... Okay, so let's leave the Republican out of it. What I'm saying is just 65-year-old white... Oh, yeah, you, you, no, brought, you like brought it up. Blue, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I tend to talk cap... <laughs> Heavy cap on yeah. this, uh, on this, uh, as the kids say. Yeah, this show is brought to you by Pfizer. I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been called out for talking cap yeah, on this yeah. podcast. Cap, mean? cap means that you're uh, just bullshit. You, yeah, just horseshit. Like you're just talking yeah. horseshit. Trust it's me, I, I got. What does horseshit mean? Just like, like, okay. So I was, I was going on a rant about how this chick wanted to hang out with me. And uh, I didn't think that she really wanted to hang out with me. I think she was just desperate and wanted a boyfriend and was going to take anyone. Sure. Yeah. And then I was like, she kept calling me and I didn't want to hang out with her. So I kept making excuses. And then eventually I was like, let me just let me just say something that would ward off a normal girl. So she'll stop calling me. And okay. I was like, she's like, hey, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, I'm actually sniffing Coke with my friends. I'm probably going to go home and sniff Coke by myself. That's what I do. I do that a lot. I like sniffing Coke alone. <laughs> and this chick was just like, oh my God. It's so cool. I love doing that too. I'm like, no, you fucking don't. Shut up. Uh, and, and he, he up. said he said one line on the clip, and he's just like, no girl uh, likes cocaine. Uh, like, no, period. No girl. No. Oh, and they all went after. Oh, him. and they oh. fucking swarm. You people yeah. are the fucking worst. And they Swarmed. fucking ripped I on him. Like, hate like be you. have you never seen Pulp Fiction retard? Like the people. Yeah. Were, <laughs> I would they hate were ripping to be on them. Him. I would oh. hate. To, I get attacked on a di- like oh. th- this week, dude. This week on fa- I, I stopped on Facebook. Right, I still I. Post on there, yeah. But I used to because this Facebook are sneaky fuckers, man. They know what annoys you, they listen to your conversations, right? <laughs> yeah. And all, all I did, right, dude, like I'm, I'm not gonna let you know about my family's personal life, but like I've, I've wanted my media family that is a member of, of the gay community, right? Okay, that's yeah. all I'll say. So I take her to fucking. That I, I drop her down and my wife so I just busy out of my daughter I dropped them down to the fucking pride parade in Patchogue the other day right right and I came home and fucking fucking cursing the pride parade on the way home so my phone's listening right like a fucking squealer right my oh, phone yeah, tells yeah. the internet hey this is what upsets McThomas you should put this on his page guys <laughs> like an instigator so I see this post and I'm still mad by the way because I had plans that day I had yeah. fucking shit to do because I had a long night in the city ahead of me and I wanted to relax play Red Dead Redemption shoot some in the face and ride my motor Cycle. That's all I wanted to do. So then all of a sudden, I get this post on the top of the thing, right? And it goes, if you don't like pride parades, you're a bigot. 
and I lost my shit. Right now, first of all, bigot is the new because we all we have a new yeah, word to call yeah. everybody. Right, we go from bigot. Uh, Nazi was recently yeah, racist. Everybody I hated. Every, every guy yeah. was a nar- narcissist. Remember, we were, oh, we were yeah. all narcissists. So narcissists. There's, there's a new word every. So now it's bigot. And all I said was "fuck your parade." Right. Yeah. Like all. See, because my 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 thing is on on the pride parade was look at I get it, man. Look at you. Dude, there were people who were persecuted for being gay, but that's not your fight, right? Why right. are you doing like have those parade with those old gay guys who really suffer? Who really had to hide in yeah. basements and fuck? You know, but I now think you guys are fucking <laughs> in a Chipotle on the fucking table in front of me. More power to you, man. Yeah. You get more ass than me. I'm happy for you. See, Nothing I, against gay people. I think it's just okay to be anti-parade in general. I, mean, I hate parades. Like that's what I'm saying. Like they just <laughs> shut down fucking Hattie's traffic. Parade, fuck you. Yeah, who fuck gives Disney a shit? Parade. When I go to Disney, I was at Disney recently, and I really wanted an ice cream. And right across the street is the best ice cream. Couldn't get to it. Why? Fucking parade going by. Exactly. I, I knew it was at least an hour away fuck from that Thanksgiving. ice cream. Thanksgiving. Right? All of the parades can fuck off. Dude. Exactly. So the gay pride parade, let's do that's your sexual preference. That's what it is. Now yeah. you can say something, well, it's a representation of all the struggles. No, you just, you're not going through struggles, kid. You didn't go. These old guys, these old queens, yeah, yeah. right? Really fucking struggled. Right. right? The ones that got fired from work. Right? And, now yeah. I don't like and I had to go do a r I had to go do a radio interview, right? There's a radio station in Patchogue, right? And I had to get to that radio station to do an interview to promote a show I have coming up in the end of July. Right? They want to do a pre-recorded interview and play it close to the to the date. Yeah. So I can't get to my fucking interview. I can't get to work now That's because hell. this person likes it likes it in the ass and he wants to yeah. tell us all about it yes. like do you know what I mean and it's not me against nothing against gay people no. that's your preference and I don't like your fucking parade that's all it doesn't mean I don't want your people your people are disgusting you need to oh the lord is gonna ju-. like it's none of that shit but you immediately when I put that shit down you jump these people fucking jump on it because oh we got him he yeah. said our word they'll take some what of this bigot. right now they'll edit it all of a sudden Mick Thomas is a bigot oh, you're, when you're, I, yeah. you're Hitler you're, you're giving, yeah, them, a, yeah. you're giving the, them a lot of slack to edit right yeah, now. watch the protest yeah. at the comedy cellar this fucking Saturday night. Now these fucking people outside, Mick Thomas is a fucking bigot. Yeah. Like, why? Why? Because I don't like your fucking parade. I got nothing against your people. I got a fucking daughter who's gay. Go fuck yourselves. Yeah. Hey. Right. Yeah. No, I I agree hundred percent, dude. And it's just like I, like that that whole thing is just like an inconvenience in general. And I feel like. Um, you know, it's just like it just comes off like, why do you gotta like announce it to everybody? You know, like why? Does right. it, like, I it's okay to have pride, but like, I, it's the same as like the Puerto Rican. Like, you can just switch it to Puerto Rican Day Parade. Any of them, man. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I'll stick cool. with the Paddy's Day one because I don't want people thinking exactly. like, exactly. Oh, because the Paddy's Irish are the worst, Day. dude. How many more times can you hear the bagpipes, which is the worst fucking instrument ever? Yeah, dude. Like, you know how dishonorable <laughs> it is to play that at a funeral? Can you imagine like that's the last sound you hear as a body's going into the ground? That, that's <laughs> squealing, like a, right? Who wants door? to see fat cops marching down a street? Yes. Right? Or firemen. Or you go to your town. You go to your That's town just to see people that you already know walking in a straight line. Yeah. Hey, Lou. Hey, Phil. Hey, Janice. And it's the same people. You kn- he works in the deli. He works in a fucking bagel store. This guy works at fucking Splish Splash. And they're just, they're just taking up your town. People you already know. That's the bank manager. But the and Irish day. walking in a straight line. Who gives a fuck? The Irish, way. the Irish day parade is the worst because like, you know, then I start fuming because then I'll see a fucking Italian guy in like a red shirt oh. and he's throwing <laughs> up in the corner oh. and I'm like what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing yeah. here? You get out of here. Your day's tomorrow <laughs> with your <laughs> fucking <laughs> cannolis. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever come to me with a cannoli and call yeah. it the dessert Bloody you piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here with your fucking trying to. I was at a wedding the other day and this big tray of dessert came in. Chocolate, strawberries, rainbow cookies, all that shit. And then someone put a cannoli on it. I was like get that the fuck out of there. That is a fucking piece of athlete's foot. Get that off that fucking dessert. I don't know what it is but fucking, it ain't a fucking dessert. It's like cream cheese cannoli. in like a it's bl- bread blanket. It's so, fucking so awful. We're going to talk about uh, we hate how people show certain prides. Yeah. Correct? 100%. That's what we're talking Not the about. Not the gays. My, That's ho- my, my, my whole goal for this whole episode is to guess everyone up about Italians. That's, I was bringing it there. <laughs> I was bringing it there. Let's make a segment about this with this podcast yeah. um, called uh, like, I don't know what should, like, just something where we just bash Italians for like sweaty greasy eye tie hour <laughs> well, I, I, I got into it I got into it one, <laughs> with Italian. I get into Italians all the time right yeah 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 and, and dude <laughs> my best friend over here dude 
Corey Brooks, the guy I have a podcast with, and dude, he's he's 100% Italian, yeah. but he's not Italian, <laughs> right? So I was at a wedding and there's all Italian people there, and like there's a guy in a cross, and I have a cross too, right? I'm a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a devout Christian, I'm a devout man of God. And uh, so I'm talking to this guy, and he's like, yo, I like your cross, you know, he's giving all the. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, all right, Rocky. <laughs> like, yeah, I like your cross, you know? <laughs> 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 I was like, I, I like your cross. Hey, the father. Like, yeah, yeah, it's Vinnie good. Barberino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut like, the fuck up. And I go, and I go, good for you, man. Good for you. And he goes, what do you mean good for me? Go, I got a cross. You got a cross. What do you mean good for me? He goes, you know, because your people killed Jesus. <laughs> oh, and he goes, yes. oh. I go, what do you mean? Because the Romans. He goes, and where is Rome, motherfucker? Rome is right in the heart of Italy. You Italians kill Jesus. I mean, they fucking hate that, dude. You, you they get Italian so angry. Jesus? They get mad. They like, get I, so I, angry. I mean, it's a bit hypocrite. It's a bit balls on you for wearing that crucifix. I know. After you're the ones that nailed him to it. Exactly. We didn't. The Romans did. Yeah, it was the like, Jews. Like that, Same thing. Yeah, that's, Jews. Like saying, that, that's like saying when you go to other countries who hate us, hate Americans. Fuck America. And we're like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. It's the Washington people did it. <laughs> Not, it's all those cunts in Langley did it. It ain't, it ain't us Long Island fucks. Don't get, don't you hate us fat Long Islanders. It's the Washingtonians. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking assholes. Italians uh, kill Jesus. Yeah. That's crazy. Because we we had a great green room session what yeah, a couple we of weeks ago we where where it was us three and uh, Dan Barry. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. We, and we started going off a little bit about uh, all the like the because there's kind of been like the Sebastian Maniscalco, you know, like Italian, like oh everybody's got a Nona. It's like, like an, it's like enough, enough. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I fucking, think we we leave it with Seb. I think Sebastian is the king yes. of Italian comics. Leave what it. I mean by Italian comics, I have so many friends who are Italian comic, who comics who are Italian, right, right. But they're not that. There's over a difference. The, yeah, yeah. They, I got so many of them, but I, I I think unless you're who's really good at coming up with a original spins is uh mike vacchione yeah uh but for the most of it you have sebastian i think mike vacchione there's not that many others that are original with their italian material and it's all dude it's all the fucking yeah. same shit because on, on stop uh, picking it one day we were here and we were talking there's an italian comic that's kind of playing like an irish area and we were like getting excited and we're like oh he's gonna fucking bomb and it's gonna be like some <laughs> drunk <laughs> irish guy going i don't got a fucking nona yeah 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 what the fuck so can we can we put the together a show where it's all like hack Italians, like six hacks and hack Italians. Uh -huh. Like bring the comics in or play their clips. <laughs> no, no, like we have them on a show. We could uh, do that. Yeah. We could do that. Because we the problem there is like the way I'm wired is, dude. If I if I find out like when I talk to you, like and you're a nice guy, I find it hard to shit on you in a way. In a yeah, way, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I only shit on my friend. Like I'll, I'll rip you apart, like dude, because I yeah. do that with my friends, right? Yeah. I can do that. But I I think after that I, I don't want to be a bully. So if I find like Fat J, free Long Island guy here, dude, he's the nicest guy you ever. I, see, yeah. I don't look. I don't, I don't look at him as Italian. I do. He do does. Yeah, he's an Italian comic. He, he? He, he drops enough of it to See, let I us know. See, I kind of almost look at okay. him as like a black guy. When I when you look at like just by looks, yeah, no, like I, I he, but like he kind of like got diabetes? that whole attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you meant by that. <laughs> no, he, I don't know. It's just the way he talks and everything. Like, <laughs> no, he does. He definitely is a, an Italian guy, but he, do, you know, he doesn't he doesn't lean into. It, but if you if you we just walk, went to the audience, you'd be like, yeah, who? Uh, yeah, yeah, nobody yeah, says yeah. that. Okay, Jay, yeah. come on, man. Yeah, nobody says right. that. Yeah, nobody said. True. Nobody goes like, "Hey, man, I got a hundred dollars. Let's go to AC and get a uh, who." Uh. Yeah. Nobody says that. It's a horror. Yeah, why, why, why? Why does he black guy? Because his shirts from Target. I don't know. Like, he sells weed. Maybe. Yeah, he sells <laughs> weed. <laughs> Wow, he can't be a fucking record producer. <laughs> he's got to be. Uh, he's got to be all the negative stereotypes. Guys, again, we're I talking. Like, hung, hung like a horse. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that one. We're talking shit here, guys. All right? No, but yeah, again, yeah. again, let's, let's you, just talk uh, shit. You don't need to explain it. Once you put a disclaimer up in your in your bio that that the Treading Water podcast is a comedy podcast, you're covered. Yeah, yeah. you're covered. Yeah. That's what I do on my cheaper that, than therapy podcast. Do? I put on the, on the cheaper than therapy podcast when I post it. It's at the bottom is the cheaper than therapy is a comedy podcast, meaning that anything I say. And you want to, you could, you yeah. really said. It's a joke. Comedy podcast. It's up to you now what, if you want to take it as a joke yeah, or not. Should, now yeah, it's, it's I'm going to put it back on you to either laugh or get upset or fuck off. I was saying the owner of this club is like the biggest Italian. And yeah. we're, and we're shit, shit talking Italians, but we're. Joking. No, I'm more, talk, yeah. I'm more shit talking Italian comics. Cause I, I, yeah. I genuinely yeah. do. I go to Italian people's houses. They're the nicest people. They're welcoming. They, they well, make you feel at home. Dude, they, I get on, stressed. 
I get stressed because they can't relax until I'm like, do what? What do you want me to do? Like, what more? Do you, what can I do to shut you up? Yeah, right. Like, you you gotta have this. I don't want here. Have that. No, no. Here, look. Fuck my yeah, daughter. They're, they're, like, dude, they're, I don't like, stop. I'm they're okay. Big, they're big. Yeah. They're big in hospitality. Give me a diet coke and I'll I'll be fine. Like yeah. I'll be fine. But like I, my problem is is like Italian comics. Right. That's yeah. all it is. That's right. not, that, I think that's more not what we're. not comics who are Italian. Italian comics. Like I worked with one at a. At, at, at the Borgata a few years back, and uh, nice guy, man, really. Is we hung out and everything, and, and uh, after the af between shows down on the boardwalk, we went for dinner, and he went up. Now he's used to going out in front of only. He was opening for. If I give too much away about him, you don't know who he is. But he okay, used to open yeah. for a big, big Italian comic, not Sebastian, and. Uh, you know, so he's used to murdering because all these yeah. big it's theaters, softball, fucking, all these yeah. big theaters are a bunch of, oh, right? Yeah. Oh. So he goes up and he's bombing hard. Real? Bombing hard. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. In front of, uh, I think, 1,200 of Borgata seats. Wow. Yikes. And I go, it's 1,200. Every, it's sold out every night, right? Yeah. It's, it's Saturday to Sunday, like meaning like the week. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, seven yeah, days, yeah. yeah. And then they start a new comic Monday, whatever. Right. Um, so we're doing, or Sunday to Saturday, I should say, sorry. Sunday to Saturday is what the lineup is. Then they change the lineup, three comics. So you do it. So it's 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 1,200 people a night, and he's bombing almost every night. And he comes back, I don't know what the fuck. I go, dude, because you're talking about is it sauce or gravy? Yeah. And <laughs> look, did you see all the all the fucking Asians out there? Do you know what I mean? Dude, they don't care. All the Look at the Germans out there, man. What are you doing? Yeah. That's a pop fly foul. You know, what, what are you saying. doing, man? Like, yeah. it's like, That's a pop fly foul. Right. Right, the but Asians gravy. So that's like, but how do you? Not but how anyone. do you know if you're an Italian comic and you have Italian comics open for you, and then everywhere you go, it's like, how are you not stepping on the same shit because you've dedicated your life to that shit? You've yeah. dedicated that story. Like, or we didn't have. Remember when comedy? I fucking can't stand it. Okay. Hey, when we were growing up, we used to have. Did you? Oh, nostalgia is a fucking did weakness. You? No. So you're basically yeah. doing the job of. They go like, hey, remember He-Man figures? Hang yeah. on a second. Google, there you go. You just did the job of Google, asshole, and you yeah. put no punchline behind it. Yeah. Exactly. That's 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 weak. It's low hanging fruit. Yeah. When we grew up, we didn't have. We yeah. To, we we drank from the hose, and nothing happened to us. We like, used to yeah, push. Yeah. We used to push around a rock with a stick. Like, yeah. yeah. Shut up, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. You're proud. Well, you're proud of that. You're telling us. Yeah. Why are these monkeys just fucking applauding you? You <laughs> fucking idiot. What did you say about them? Where did you grow up? Dublin, Ohio. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Okay. How about this? Here's a, here's a, here's like a situation. Okay. Would you, for the next year of your life, next year of your career, you are getting paid like six figures. You're making six figures. Right. You got a fully stocked tour. Yeah. You're, you're selling out small theaters, like 1,500 theaters. Right. 1,500 person theaters. But every- I like that you couldn't go bigger. <laughs> yeah. Small theaters. Like he's giving me a big scenario. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Okay. Like, okay. All right. He's like 1,500 people. And a hundred of them are comps. <laughs> but then one night someone doesn't turn up. So you're looking at two empty seats in the front row and it's fucking with your mind. <laughs> anyway, and so you're, you're in the green room so you're, and you're, they've only got regular Cokes and you're like, Diet Coke. It's not your fault. <laughs> you find regular Coke to syrup. <laughs> I'm like, where is it? <laughs> like, don't give me is this. <laughs> is this fountain soda? I don't know what the hell. I hate syrup. <laughs> I got to come in the same door as the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I got to park on the street. What the fuck? <laughs> this place is a dumb. <laughs> okay, so big theaters. All right, go on. Big theaters. You're making six figures. You got a fully stocked tour all yeah. year. You got to live your life like this for the next year. Okay. But you are like the biggest pandering, like, oh, like right wing, man. like a hokey ass. Just like my yeah. pronouns are kiss my ass. Well, that's uh, not right wing. Oh yeah, yeah, pronouns. Sorry, just yeah, like yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, like just yeah, horse yeah. shit. Like just like stupid horse shit. Would you would you do it? Uh, for a year, uh, six figures. It'd be think of it, it'd be good for the first like three months, four months, and then so be like, with I these hate theaters, right? How many shows am I doing a week? They're they're right, like five. Five shows a week. So those other two nights, can I go to regular comedy clubs and be myself? Because the reason why I tell you, yeah. this is like I, I'm, I'm kind of with an agency. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say like no I'm because it's, they're putting. Because I'm, I'm with an agency and they're sending me around the country and I okay. get this like a, like a five, a, it's like a four o'clock in the afternoon show. Like you gotta do twenty minutes, but you gotta be squeaky clean. That's not who I am, right? Right. You can't stretch my legs there. But the money is fucking really good. Okay. The money yeah, is really yeah. good. So I kind of am selling my soul, which allows me to take the day off and come to do a nice podcast like this. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I, 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 if I'm allowed to do my regular stuff, like keep my podcast the same and all that stuff, I, I would, cause I, here's the thing. I'm very, I know we, 
you're probably looking for a, a not so fucking deep answer, but I'm very grateful that I get to make people laugh, no matter who it is. Yeah. Right. Okay. When I go on stage, I like, do. Like when I when I make people laugh, like I used to hate. I used to be above it. Like if I do a senior show, like ah fuck, because I, I work with Andy Cooney a lot. Andy Cooney is an old Irish guy, and he puts on these cabaret shows with dancers and whatever. And I go up and do twenty minutes, and I used to look down my nose on it. Yeah. Like, yeah, just give me the fucking pay. Because he used to pay, he pays really well. I still work with him. I nearly said he used to. And I'm like, just give me the fucking check and I'll drive home and brag. And, you know, I call comics up. Like, yeah, I just did this shit for some old people. Yeah. And then I would just realize that these old people were having a fucking time of their life. And I was like, who the fuck am I to look down my nose? Just like, I, I'm so lucky that I get to make. There's one thing I want to do as a kid. I wanted to make people laugh. But when I was a kid, when I said I wanted to be a comedian, I remember the day I said I want to be a stand up comedian. I didn't have a set in mind, I didn't have an audience in mind. I just remember going, I want to make those people laugh. So I would do that for a year if it was being, if even though the shit's hacky and it's like, but if I'm genuinely making people laugh, I'm all right with that. Okay. I'm that all actually, right that, that actually turned this into a I, very heartfelt thing. I, I, right I like that. that answer a lot because you, you don't realize that, <laughs> I, I guess like a, uh, like a general audience member that doesn't know a lot about comedy, they don't realize that we do take those gigs for the paycheck once in a while. Yeah. You know, and, like, and, and then like there's the, you know, the, the free gigs that we do once in a while that we get to stretch our legs and be ourselves and, yeah, and, yeah. and try out new shit. And, you know, and then there's like, I kind of go back and forth between the two. And it's like the two like fucking poles. And, you know, usually you want to hit like in the medium somewhere where you could just like, you know, you're, you're not fucking driving people crazy. You kind of right. getting to be yourself. But like, yeah, like there are those, those fucking cash grabs. Because, like, you know, especially when you, you make it to the next level, like, I, I still have to work a day job. You right, know? right. But, like, if you, you take it to that next level, you got to take those gigs to of course. fucking pay the bills. I could take one of those gigs and my mortgage is paid for. All my all my bills are covered that month from that one gig. I'm talking about car loans. Mm-hmm. Right. Everything. So anything else I have is is gravy. Like, it's yeah. spend the money. Yeah. It's that's, fucking, that's funny that's, you say when you're a kid, you uh, you don't think about the the audiences that you you will don't be. you don't right. you don't you don't like I just remember like when I was a little kid there was a there's, John Leguizamo had a special it was called Sexaholic I don't know if you remember that I do and I was I was a little kid like that was like I would watch it again and again and it wasn't like it wasn't it was a like HBO so it wasn't like you that's find, when you it, that's when you know. Like there's a lot of people now that are comedian. They fell into it because they want attention. It looks easy yeah. because of crowd work comics, right? I mean, not not, not so celebrities are doing this too. After yeah, like man. their time yeah. is up, they want to try fucking comedy. They you just know, because yeah. lo- I guess it looks easy. It looks easy because I I can I can I'm funny. I can I can do what I want. But when you when you're at that stage, and, and I don't know you about which one you what what comedy you watched that got you there. Mm-mm. But once you start looking at a special over and over again, oh, over and yeah. over, you're not just fucking. Hey, I'm entertained at this. Dude, no, you're I'm, lo- I'm, I'm you're, dissecting it. You're learning it, man. I get my, t- mine was, was uh, Louis, Louis C.K. hilarious. Okay, where so I, where I, I dissected it. You're very young then in the comedy. Not would, not you're doing comedy a while, but I'm saying that's a, a reese. Like yeah. I wouldn't have thought of a special that young. You know, because I I had known nothing about comedy. Just I I was born and raised in Levittown. I lived down a block from this club. My high school is in the parking lot mm-hmm. of this club. So all I knew was governors. Mm-hmm. And um, so, like, when I was starting to, like, get into comedy, like, and, like, I always enjoyed it, but then there was, like, that that moment when I watched that special, which is odd because this is when Lewis was on top of the world. And um, I just had that moment where I was like, I think I can do that. You yeah, know, and it yeah. is like I don't know if it's because he made it look so easy. He does, you know, and he it, does. and I I I just kind of like there was one joke, and I don't even remember the joke in particular, but I was just like, I see how he did that. I think I can do that. And then like I I used to come to this club, and it was an old manager. You probably remember him, Tommy. And, yeah, yeah, I and, still talk and, to Tommy. Yeah, yeah, great he lives guy. Upstate in New York. I was you, talking about him the other day, actually. Great artist. He mm-hmm. Used to be a very funny comedian on the scene, and uh, he, he was wasn't really comedian. He never gave it enough of a shot. But, but to me, I was one of the. F- I used to have a podcast with him. Yeah. Before anybody was doing podcasts, and we did it from his his garage out in out on out east in Long Island. Yeah. And Tommy just would show up drunk and high. Oh yeah. And the yeah, show yeah. was terrible. But yeah. he, to me, is one of the funniest people on the planet. You know. But I used to show up for the open mic here, and I would, s- and he would let me in for free. I would sit in the back. You know, I would take drink a couple beers. You know, get the, my two item minimum, and I would sit in the back, and I started taking fucking notes mm-hmm. on just open mic comics. You know, right, right. And that's when I started seeing you, and like I guess uh, Chris Davis was on the scene at yeah, the time, yeah. and like John Ziegler. Uh, I think Lori was like a just like getting Lori Palmateri was just like starting out 
And, uh, you know, I just sit there and take fucking notes. And I did that for like six or eight months until Tommy finally went, are you finally getting on stage tonight, faggot? And I was just like, <laughs> you know what? Fuck you. I popped like two Xanax. I fucking was, <laughs> I was bugging out. I had so much fucking stage fright. I, I had written about like, I thought seven to eight minutes. It turned out to be about five. I was able to get friends down to the club because it was like a six person minimum. And you know, because I live local. And, uh, you know, I got like five people, uh, John Trusen, the booker at the time was, uh, you know, he put me on and they put me up last on the open mic. There was 300 people in the mm -hmm. fucking crowd. And, oh, uh, shit. yeah. And, and I actually went back to that set. I, I remembered it. Like I fucking bombed and I had two good jokes and, and I was like, <laughs> if I worked at this, maybe I would be decent, you know, but, um, I, w I, I went back and I looked and I, I actually did better than I thought, you know? Mm -hmm. Which I thought was yeah, kind of weird. You, you always do, but all, also the comics like are honest enough. At least the good ones are honest enough when they did bad, when they did good, right? Yeah. And it's okay to be a little hard on yourself. I, I'm usually my toughest critic, but I kind of f like frame it like this is my first set ever, mm -hmm. and like as far as that went, I think I did okay. You know, like especially like following some some decent comics that were on that show. And, um, you know, I, I, and then it was like after that moment where I just got that, like that eruptious laugh, like where it's like that belly laugh from the audience oh, that and, and yo, and it, that was just like, I was addicted to that right there. That, and you, I was you like, feel like that's the most was, yeah. powerful. Like, and it's like, like I, I first I, get it. Yeah. That it was like, like a dopamine rush. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like, it's like go, 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 go. to me, it's not that I don't get a dopamine rush from the laughter I get. I, well, like when you first start, I'm saying. No, even then I didn't. Even then, yeah, even wow, then okay. I didn't. I didn't get it because I used to be a fighter, so okay. uh, I used to get the shit knocked out in front of people. So crowds didn't bother me. Really? What I liked about comedy is that I created that, and you're laughing at it. So it mm. wasn't like an ego or an arrogance or I'm fucking hilarious, but it was like something didn't exist. Right. I now created it, That's and it. now. That's cool. That's you're exactly. all responding to what I just yeah. created. See, that, and then when I joke, when I do, even now, when I do a joke bombs, I'm like, good. This it, joke bomb, good. Yeah. You come back and see this joke in five weeks. As yeah. little as five weeks. Some people say six months. Come back in five weeks and watch what I've done yeah. with it. Yeah. See, that's and interesting because like. you, you guys were uh, like like solo sports guys where it's like, you know, like wrestling and fighting. I was always a team sports guy where yeah. I kind of got to hide behind a helmet. So yeah. the, like the comedy... Uh, with like crowds like you know it was kind of a more vulnerable thing where people could see my reaction and when i when i first like was starting out where if a joke didn't hit you could almost you could see it on my face yeah, yeah you know because yeah. i was just like what the fuck i th like i thought that was funny but like, you also you know? I remember when i watched you first when you first came out you were doing like edgy stuff yeah very and yeah. and i remember thinking i don't know if i said it to you i don't because i remember thinking like Cause I remember some I couldn't even tell you who the comic was because if it was I'd out him, but he goes, "Oh the fuck is that guy bombed?" And I was just like, "Well, yeah," because the material he chose, like, like Jim Norton, right? Jim Norton didn't start out edgy, yeah, right. No, he, he, he he started like no, don't get me wrong, he wasn't squeaky clean either, but he built up the confidence and the stage presence and the and the and the maturity to start delivering those edgy shit. You came out the gate edgy. And you didn't have the strength or, or, or I won't even say the confidence, but the likability to pull it off. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Not yet. And, and I heard Jeselnik talk about this too on a, on a podcast where it was like he came out and he kind of had that pretty boy look mm -hmm. and it was just audiences hated him right off the bat. And he got kind of got to play that villain role, and I was like, man, I really kind of identified that. But he but, leans into those bits. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. Though. He he kind of really pushed earlier. into it. But I kind of craved that that like, please like me. I, I know I'm being edgy, mm -hmm. but please like me. And it, it was kind of like that was the difference between us. Yeah, but yeah, it's like, yeah, when you start out, because like, when you start out like pretty and, yeah. and you're young and the people are just like, because you like, oh, I kind of do look like a fucking douche. Like you yeah. stand out, you're like, oh, I look like a fucking like, yeah, yeah. I, I had earrings. I, had a I was like in soup. I was still competing. So I was like shredded. Like I was a yeah. good looking dude when I started. And I was like, dude, this is. You do look like a fucking douchebag up I, here. I, I remember I was, it was actually governor, I swear to God, it was governor's and it was around, it was December because I remember it was a holiday party oh, all no. to the right. Take that long table to the stage right. Uh -huh. Yeah. About 12 people on it, maybe more. And uh, all girls 
except one guy and the girls are fucking ha- I was only doing like it was, a, it was a million comics here yeah, yeah. and I was doing maybe an eight, eight minute spot whatever it was uh, ten minutes probably and there was a like there were fuck a million comics on the show and I went up at the sweet spot because I had to get out of it. I had to go across to the brokerage at the time yeah. Yeah. can you do Spire and run over there we need you we need a comic over this yeah go club the club so I'm doing <laughs> I go up doing. I look down. I'm two minutes in. I look over, and the whole table of girls are laughing, and the guy sitting there. <laughs> yeah. And I go. He's the hater. And I go. Are you all right, buddy? You go, I can tell by your body language you don't like me. I go. Let me guess. I go. Let me guess. You're the you're the funny guy at the office that likes to tell jokes at the at the water cooler. I know you don't like it that a yeah. good looking professional is up here making the girls you're used to making laugh. Am I right? And all the girls are like. Ah! Oh, oh no. no. Call them out. And here's no. what I said. I go, don't worry, buddy. I got five minutes left. You can go back to court and run Burgundy at the <laughs> water. Because <laughs> you know that's what they do. Yeah, that's the it. movie quotes. You, you <laughs> literally told me about this guy before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because he stayed with me. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's I remember amazing. coming up from the city one time, and I'm on the train, and I'm with, I'm with this female. She's not a com- She's not a comic anymore, but she was. She could have yeah. been funny. And we were taking acting class together, and she was getting off at, I think, Amityville or whatever. And the Rangers were playing, and they had lost. And it was a joke between me and her because it was an eight-week class until you go to the next level. Yeah. And we were like six weeks in, and every Tuesday we took that train home. The Rangers were playing, and the Rangers lost. So I was like, I'm the bad luck. It was the joke. Like, we're the omen. Yeah. Every time we do that, they lose. And so there's this one guy, and everybody was miserable. And this one guy just starts quoting Anchorman. Um, and yeah. everybody's laughing. And I'm mad. I go, he's not even doing it right. <laughs> 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 not even his jokes. <laughs> what a low bar. Like, Anchorman, what a low bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I've been getting mad at recently? It's very almost uh, similar. Is OnlyFans girls on Twitter using uh, professional comedians' bits like as tweets yeah 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 i've been yeah. seeing a lot of they that just lip sync it you know they're like just literally uh, like uh again to bring up louis ck um they i saw one of them just like word for word posted um a, a bit that he did mm. and and I, I was i just like i called it out right away i was like that's a louis ck bit yeah you know like like in there you know and then the of comments, course, dude shut up look at her tits it's like five thousand <laughs> retweets you know yeah. and then like i'm trying to put out like an original tweet it's like okay 54 people see it and i was just like come on you know i i get i get a little bothered by like people yeah. like at the water cooler that like recite like comedian bits or like the movie quotes because it's like you're not even coming up with anything yeah you know you're just recycling something yeah there was, there was a guy i was flying to wherever insert town here yeah and uh there was a guy behind me and he was he was telling this girl like she was like she, i'm a nervous flyer so he started telling her these bad airplane jokes but there were other comics bits and he was trying to trying to pawn them off as his own oh. you know what i mean i was like ah oh, dude i'm embarrassed for you i hope this plane goes down <laughs> i hope this plane goes down dude i'm embarrassed for everybody right now what you're doing is terrible jesus christ dude what you're doing is fucking terrible it's it's it used to never annoy me like when people just told like just like regular people saying hack shit like i used to just walk past it but mm-hmm. now i'm just like let's fucking do you have some backbone yeah, like, yeah, have, yeah. Have, try a little Try like I'll just try a little, like yeah. a little bit. Like I generally get excited if I see someone at like my, you know, cause like I said, I work day jobs, and so it's like if there's someone there that is like like genuinely funny, funny, and they're like creating things, like I, like actual jokes, and not just like saying th- like lines they saw from like The Sopranos or Seinfeld or something. Yeah. And I'm just like, yo, that's like like good for you, man. You know, some, some people are actually funny. Like yeah, they, they do. They do get. Oh it. yeah. Whatever and like as a yeah. as a comedian, like I'll even take like a back seat to that guy. I'm like, yeah, you dude, like this is your no, yeah, this is your time. Let him like, flap, let him flap like, his wings. I'll, I'll his do wings. it, you know, like four nights a week. You know, I'll get my applause. Like I don't need to be the funny guy on the job. Like this is your thing, man. Do you, Good do for you, you. Do you find it now that you know you, you do it more often? You know, like it's like oh, we do it like multiple times a week. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like I feel like when I first started, my main thing, you know, like I said, I watched uh, John Leguizamo growing up. I, I dissected, I studied it, like just you know, and then like Chris Rock, Never Scared, Bigger Black, or like mm-hmm. I, you know, that was me being a little kid. Then middle school, high school, I was a funny guy. Sports teams, and I had like a bunch of other different groups of friends, and I had to make all those different groups of friends laugh. And I'm like, maybe you should try comedy. And I'm like, no, no, no! You just made many different groups of people in your town laugh from Long Island. Do go to college. Yeah. If you can make many different groups of people from all over the state laugh, then you can. Then I'll give you clearance to go actually pursue this. Right. And I did. And then so here I am. But it's like that whole, that whole journey up to where I am now. Like I always felt like I needed. 
to be the center of attention. I wanted the attention. Now that you do this multiple times a week, do you feel that you're like, you know, once you're done doing this, say you're at a party with your friends, like you just like, all right, what if someone? Just yeah, I don't, working? I don't, I don't. But sometimes, yeah. but also, man, we're like, we're also just we hear something like here. First of all, I can't speak for you two, but to me, there's nothing worse than going on the road with a. I don't do it anymore. Going on the road with a comic. That you can't just be yourself around. Oh, well, that's yeah. rough. You know what I mean? That's rough. Dude. It's like, hey, what's the deal? With, hey, look at the sign over there. They it never says, turn uh, it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, I will knock you out of this fucking moving car right now. <laughs> yeah. I will like this. So, and they're all Long Island guys. They all fuck. When I yeah. started, I used to, to go on the road with like, like Rich Walker. I'll, dro I'll drop his name, like not in a good way. But like, you get in a car with him, <laughs> and you're like, dude, shut. I'll walk. I, I wish Uber was invented. I yeah. fucking go to. Re I'll go to. Mo I'll make this gig at Montauk without you. Like, I don't need you. <laughs> it's um right. A fucking horrendous Dude, man going on the, I, going on the road i'm not saying rich walker but like i'm saying like it's weird so someone like that if i got a week with them i'm like he'll tuck her out by the second if you have a weekend with they, them, they don't call, tuck I'm, her out. I'm like fuck dude because like that's not enough time for this guy to tuck her out he's mm -hmm. gonna be like this this whole trip yeah yeah, yeah. i'm gonna save, save it for the stage save yeah. it for the stage yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. real save it for the, the worst is like when you're with the like when you're on the road with someone and they're just like like you don't, you wouldn't chill with them at a bar. You wouldn't yeah, chill at a party. Yeah. Yep. They're quiet and like you're like, well, we're going to fucking Chicago, so like this is a long ride. It's like, oh god, we, we, it's rough, we used to. I, I I still do. My main guy I bring on the road with me is Dan Barry, right? Is the, unless I get there and I've already organized. Hey, we already yeah. have an open and we're strict on that. Blah blah blah. I get it. Like so, I'm going to Phoenix, Arizona next month, mm. um, twenty second at the Nile Theater, two shows, and uh, so I'm bringing Dan with me. But like. I I remember, like, I remember we I D Dan and Rooney I used to put on shows together I used to produce shows I go hey can I bring the MC in middle and then we would just swap swap around who wants to be the middle who wants to be yeah. the MC and we would just go have the best time the three of us but we were at we were at uh, City Steam in uh, Hartford Connecticut oh someone told me about that place yeah it's a great room I don't know what it is now I haven't done it since the new owners uh, picked up I got to reach out to him I suppose but uh, so one of the guys was already booked there so he was doing a mm -hmm. guest spot. Like I, either Dan or Dan or Rooney, I don't know which one it was, was doing the guest spot. They already had a house MC, not a house, they already had an MC booked. So we get there and he won't shut the fuck up. And he's staying in the hotel with us. And I go, dude, this guy's so fucking annoying. So then we like the next morning, like we get up and Dan, we're all downstairs. We go to, cause I get, when I go on the road, I get up early. I don't hang around. Like, Let's go live our life, too, because that's where material comes from. Living yeah. your fucking life. Also, if you see yeah. the city that you've live never seen you. before. Exactly. Live your life. Yeah, what are you doing the stuck in the fuck? What's your joke going to be about today? Like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you can come back and tell them what you just saw today. And it's a great way to open up a show. It's a fantastic I was at one. this fucking museum today. I can't believe you guys do this. And they're like, yeah, we do do that. Yeah. Or whatever the fuck. And it's a great way to get them to like you up front. It's like the best way to open up. It really is to get to Cedar Town and talk. They love that, man. Dude, he went down they the do. town. They love, I live five love minutes that. from there. That's fucking great. He was right there. That's all funny yeah, if you can crank five six yeah Fucking man yo. yeah so i go there and then all of a sudden we're down in the lobby and i go all right guys come on we'll go we're gonna go i can't we're gonna go to mark twain's house mark twain has a house there in in hartford <laughs> connecticut and that and we're gonna, no, we're gonna go to diner first and then mark twain's house then the mall back do the show and uh so dan dan was like i've got got to wait a few minutes and he goes why he goes i invited i couldn't tell you the guy's name so i'm not like yeah, saving yeah, to be yeah, protected yeah, yeah, i just yeah. couldn't tell you the guy's name i was like Oh, that's your fault. That's your problem. <laughs> I'm leaving right now. Me and Rooney are going right now. You can come with us. And you goes, because oh, dude, I told him, well, then it's your job to uninvite him because he ain't coming unless you want to <laughs> take a taxi because I don't even think it was Uber's then. Uber's yeah, hadn't yeah. taken off. Oh, if you want to take a taxi and bring him to the diner and then get a taxi to the fucking, <laughs> to, the, to Mark Twain's house. And then I didn't Mark Twain said, do not ride in the car with cunts. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to ride in the car with a cunt. So I'm 100%. like, hey. I'm like, you're not, you're not doing, I'm not doing it. And Dan was like so mad that day. And we were at the mall. He's like walking behind us. Why are you sucking? Because I told the guy, yeah, you should have checked with us. Yeah. You saw how mad he we made. We were trying to and ditch don't, him. And don't make me be the guy to go, Dan, I don't mean to say nothing, but I brought you with me, buddy. Like, don't yeah. make me say that. Like, right. you know, don't embarrass me. Like, yeah. I, uh, when I was like first, I was like six months in and this guy took me on the road. He was famous in the, I'm not going to name it. I'll tell you after. He was famous in the eighties and then he bombed his career like by like 92. 
and uh, Jackie so the, the joke man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> so <it> him. So <laughs> me and Terry. Doing his podcast next week. I just no, want to know. It's not him. Oh shit. Me and Terry were on a show with him, and then this guy Dennis so we, Leary. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I'm telling stories like Dennis Leary. <laughs> yeah, we all want to know now. Patty Oshmoon. I used to hate that when pot, when comedians were talking podcasts. Like, yeah, bro, this guy went up and he just he fucked me in the ass. I'll tell you after the show. Yeah. But anyway, all of a sudden I'm bleeding. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, tell us who it is. <laughs> uh, Barry Sobel. Who? Barry Sobel. Don't know who that is. See, you're protecting his name for nothing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I should have known. <laughs> he so was big guy, in the 80s, was he? was big in the 80s, yeah. Oh, you should have seen him in Syosset. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you couldn't no, go to the Dallas without him. knowing who this I think, guy was. Yeah, he's probably dead in I LA still somewhere. forgot his name. <laughs> he's probably dead. He's probably dead in LA. Barry, somewhere. was it? Sobel. Sobel. Couldn't tell you. Anyway. No disrespect, Barry. I'm sure you're a lovely man. Yeah, Barry, we, me and you had the fucking worst time. In go the world. on. So, so I'm going to roll with him for like a week, and he's just like. Dude, like a fucking nightmare. I pick him up. Terry Bales in the show. So now it's just me and him. We're going to like McGoobies. We go to like Virginia Beach. We're going like around like that area for like a week. And it's just like, dude, like we're sleeping in the same room. He would like wake up in the middle of the night, take explosive shits. Oh, God. And I was like, bro, the guy would sleep till fucking three. Like I'm out. I'm working out. I'm walking around the fucking the new, the new city. Uh-huh. And I'm like, yo, what's good? He's like, ah, I'm still sleeping. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go fucking go walk around. Of a life. Yeah. Not just because of him, but like a lot of people do it. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I, yeah, I had to drive this guy around. He's just being like a prick the whole thing. He's like, you know you know who I am? And I'm like, I was born 91. Your yeah, career had yeah. already been dead by the time. Right, right. I that was, candle had but I fucking was fizzled out. Yeah, so I was just like, all right, whatever. So, dude, we go to we go to D.C. and we're walking around and there's this big fat hood woman and she's walking a dog. And the dog's pulling each way. Dog just wants to get away. From dog's her. just trying to get away. <laughs> and so we're walking that way. She's walking our way. And he stops. He's like, "You ever think she? You ever think he doesn't want to be walked, Tubby?" And she, <laughs> she looks at me like, <laughs> she looks at me like, "Is your fucking boy okay?" And I look at him like, "Did you just say that?" He's like, "Whoa, uh oh, no. dude!" I walked across the street, and then I'm like, "Is that you, his catchphrase?" <laughs> yeah. Oh I'm God, like, I hope he's found dead. Yo, yeah. so like, in a hotel. <laughs> Motel, not even a hotel, <laughs> but a motel <laughs> with found f- KFC wrappers around them face, and an empty bucket, uh, and that's his last dead, memory. Face dead, face yeah. down in a day's end. Yeah, yeah, with just ch- fucking gay <laughs> porn on his phone, so <laughs> now his family knows. <laughs> <laughs> now his family knows that he had to so, live with that secret. So uh, the story thickens. Um, so I remember like the, the end of the, I guess, tour, if you will. He was uh we, we Asbury Park is the last part. Okay. At that point, like you know, I'm 23. I know he's like you know, like you're young, you're naive. Like I thought he was like a big name, so yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah, I was yeah. stepping on eggshells around him because I didn't want to you know make waves. Uh, eventually, you know, at this point, like I told you, like you announced him into every room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you walk into a 7-Eleven. Hey, 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 hey. So, uh, so like eventually, like 23 years old. Is it sauce or is it gravy? <laughs> oh, oh, Ryan. No, oh no, he was just, he was very Jewish. I, he yeah, was, yeah, was he? He's, he wasn't Italian, very Jewish. Right. So he, um, so we we hit Asbury Park, and eventually, like the twenty three year old me, like right. I'm competing at this time, and I'm like, why am I even taking shit from this fucking soft ass loser? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And eventually, I was just like, I was like, go brother, how about this? Like you walk that way, and I walk the fuck this way, and then we don't hang out to the show. How about that? And he's like, what do you mean? You know what? I'm like, no, I don't want to fucking hang out with you. All right, how about that? So I went. I found a bar, like a bar, like where young people were. Yeah, yeah. I'm drinking. I'm making friends. Like, oh, I got a show actually in like you know a few hours. If you want to come, like I'm getting people. All I hear, it's like a rooftop. Yeah. All I hear is like, hey. Hey, Travis, hey, I'm done with the arcade now. I'm like, go the fuck back to the arcade. The show's in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, we I, we end up doing the show. <laughs> we leave, and I'm like, thank God this fucking week is over. This is the worst week of my life. And he's like, hey, I'm actually out of places to stay. Uh, you think um, you think I can stay by your house? And I was like, no, fuck you can't off. stay by my wow. house. Fast forward to pretty much like now, a few months later, I'm talking to Dante Nero. We're, yeah, we're, yeah. we're hanging out. And I bring this guy up. I bring this whole story up. And I was just, he's like, oh, you didn't fucking, Barry Shaw, I know who that is. I was like, you do? I was like, no one else does. And he's just like, yeah, dude, that guy, he's like, you didn't hear it? I was like, yeah, well, I heard he like tanked his career because he was, you know, doing drugs and whatever. He's like, that's not why he tanked his career. And I was like, what happened? He's like, he got caught fucking a 15-year-old boy, dude. Yeah, you're walking oh, around. Oh, that's why he wanted to bring you on the road. Or- yeah, you know what's hilarious, though? Because you he, looked young. Yeah. You know, you know what's hilarious, though? Because at the time, we were hanging out, I was 23. He was probably like, eh, he would be hot if he was younger. He's old. Oh, shit. Yeah. I was probably too old for him then. Just yeah, missed it. Yeah, he's yeah. probably like, oh, you know, I, I would have liked his earlier work. When I, uh, I, remember, <laughs> I remember when I when I started, I was in a I was in a car accident, and I, so I get I get the car off, like two weeks later. That's hilarious. It's the best <laughs> car. <laughs> 
car <laughs> flipped over twice. It was great. Oh, what a what a schmo this. So is. I'm I'm again I'm a young comic and I'm about to go upstairs for like a two hour drive with uh, open up for Harry Freeman. Oh, oh Doctor Harry Long Island Wait, legend. N- no, stop it. A, a guy who legend. can't turn it off. Yeah, yeah. Who I found so, out was a doctor five years later. He's not. He's, a, he's, he's not a real doctor. Yeah, he's not. He's and I found out and I got so mad at him. Dude, I, I would be more dude, mad at you. Do you dude, think that that incompetent person was a doctor, uh, dude? Because I, I blame you. For yeah, that he was shit. like telling me in the parking lot, like, "Oh, I can yeah, write yeah, your yeah, scripts," yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah, like dude. a drug addict. I'm like, "Cool, man, do yeah, it." Yeah, dude. When you're an addict, you hear what you want to hear. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also, <laughs> also, not really Jewish. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, not really no, Jewish. No, I, I found that I was at a Michael Romano. And I like, like f- 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 yeah, he does him. the noises. He, good friends yeah. are Ray Romano. Yeah, uh, but anyway, he. Uh, so I, I I I get I like driving everywhere. It's not a control thing. I just like driving. So I get in I get in I get in I text him and go, hey man, do you wanna? I'm on the way to pick him up at a or meet in some fucking stop and shop somewhere, some parking lot. I go, hey man, you want me to drive? He goes, no, I'm not getting in a car with you when you're behind the wheel. I go, right, I'll take that as a joke. Yeah. So I get in the car. I swear to God, I'm in the car, and all of a sudden he takes off. So I take out my phone. I just want to text my wife. Go, hey, look, I just let you know I got here because this is before. Fucking your cell phone didn't have a GPS. I had a fucking yeah. Garmin thing on the window. Oh, we're I didn't know we were in Long Island. Right. So I text her like, "Hey, just let you know, I made it here." Blah blah blah. I'll text you from the road, whatever. And he goes, "Are you gonna be on that thing all day?" And I just go, like, "We hadn't even left stop and shop, like the parking lot." And I go, I look down, I see an audio book. I go, "Why don't you put on the audio book there, Harry? We we'll listen to that." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, I'm already two discs in. I don't care. Just put it on there." So we listened to Keith Richards' book, <laughs> like the whole way there and back. Um, I didn't want to talk to him. Yeah. yeah. I would. Um. What do you think? I mean, this is this is extremely aggressive, and obviously, it's not going to fucking happen. What do you think? Like. <laughs> What do you think the clearance is to like, all right, I'm going to fight this guy on the road. Like, I'm fighting this comedian. Like, I just mad at him. He's being a nightmare. And like, yo, uh, th- throw your fucking hands up. Like, I'm not doing no, it, it will take a lot. Like, like, I'm very vocal, like, to the point where. Yeah, because we're adults now. Yeah, I'll go, hey, Madison, I can't be around yeah. you anymore. I got it. But if you're going to keep fucking pushing. Like, there was a con- another comic. was at the Borgata. Uh, same story. And we're, we're having dinner after the show late at night. And we're talking about old kung fu movies. Okay. Right? And I mean, we're laughing, like like knee slapping laughing. Yeah. We're being obnoxious in the restaurant. And I go to I go, I'm telling this guy, I go, Hey, did you ever see No Retreat, No Surrender? One of my favorite kickboxing movies when I was a kid. And he goes, What's that about? And I go, I go, it's about this guy who's obsessed with Bruce Lee. And it was Jean-Claude Van Damme's first movie, and Jean-Claude Van Damme had no words in it. And he's basically <laughs> the henchman for the villain. Like, so he stands yeah. beside him, and he does all the fighting for him. And the guy comes in to take over his dad's martial arts studio. His dad says no, and Jean-Claude Van Damme breaks his leg. So they pack up, and they move to Seattle. Now, so what does Jason Stellwall do? That's the character's name. He goes to Bruce Lee's grave and prays to the grave and Bruce Lee visits him every night in his garage and teaches him how to fight, <laughs> right? So that's the movie. So we're laughing our asses off, oh right? God. And he's and he's trying to oh, talk shit. to me. And I go, hey, man, here's what... And he goes, yeah, but then what happens? I'm going to get to him in one second. And then he goes, yeah, but tell me what happened. He goes, no, no, when I, g- give me one second. I'll get to it. Like, I'm trying to get to the story. He got his food, his lunch tray. He stood up and he goes, you know what? If you're not going to let me talk... This conversation is over. Oh my god! And I'm thinking like this is a joke because, dude, I'm. I, first of all, I had the floor. By yeah. the way, I had the floor. You asked me about this movie, motherfucker. Yeah. Right. And you're asking a question, and I said I will get to that because <laughs> he's asking about the ending. I go, yeah. I'll get to that. So then he walked off, and I go, Are you? F-? I go, all right, Maybe he's sensitive. So as we're clearing off our tray, I walk back and I go to him. I go, uh, Hey, man. So tomorrow he goes, No, 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 no. We're done. He takes his phone out and he walks off. And I go, So then next night he comes back in. I'm in the green room. He comes up to give me one of these hugs, and I go, No, 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 no. Unless you apologize to me like a man, we're fucking done. And the only way we're going to end this is either we you apologize to me, we throw hands, or you walk away. And he's like, all right, bro. And he just walked away. And really? Day, Couldn't even yeah. apologize. And I bump into him all the time. Wow. I was like, dude, I, I, fuck, dude. Yeah. It, it's, um, yeah, all it's right, like. real quick. I, I, we got we to gotta wrap up. Yeah, we got to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, we're going no, a little sorry. long. But yeah, no, dude. It's, it's uh, as an adult, man. Yeah, you, you just got to, like, you got to yeah, say you gotta you're sorry. Say, speak your mind. And the, dude, there's something about, there's a maturity to saying sorry. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I feel, I, I feel I, like it, a better man if I'm like, if I sack up. I just say sorry, not a comic. I've fucked up and I said something to someone about somebody. That I shouldn't have. Yeah. And then she came out to me. She's like, oh, you talking shit? And I was like, 
and it was a misunderstanding. She's like, you should have known more about what you were talking yeah, about yeah. before. And right. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm actually very sorry. And I pulled the boyfriend over. I was like, I'm very sorry. And I shook his hand. And she still won't talk to me. But he was like, you know, I, I appreciate you saying well, the sorry. Well, good, the, good, the, the good thing about an apology is when I apologize to you. Yeah. Now the onus is on you to accept the apology or keep it going. Oh, no, she yeah. no, she, That's the good she, thing she about won't it. she won't look yeah, at me. Yeah, you got to clear, clear your yeah, side yeah, of yeah. the street. She won't look know? at me and um and I th- I thought he was going to be tough guy, but I I wasn't trying to be tough guy. I was like, "No, I'm really trying to say I'm sorry." And he was like, "All ears, thank yeah, thank yeah, you." Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know cuz like, yeah, cuz we get it. Men get it. Yeah, it's yeah. like also you're not 22, you're not going to like, "Let's fight." You know, <laughs> <Right>. like 20 <laughs> think of how wild that is in your early 20s like, yeah, "Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah." Let me get my chimp friends and we'll all fight in the orchard trees. <laughs> and, then you almost, and then you almost get Throw shit at each other <laughs> As well fucking chimps And then you almost Get in real trouble Can I tell one more story Why you can't fight Yeah go for it And then we'll fucking Wrap it up So pretty much my friend I was in the co- This is when I realized like, You can't do this anymore you can't, you can't fight anymore Because I remember my friend He was a big drug dealer A big drug addict And he was doing steroids too So we just knew he was gonna uh, his yeah. heart, He's his, wild His heart was gonna pop right. We knew we just Any time he's gonna fucking die And uh, so eventually You know I get out of practice um, and I, I hear that, you know, yeah, hey, listen, Charlie's dead. They found him in a fucking, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> and so I'm like, I better get down for this funeral. So I get down for the funeral and then I hear, I hear more about it. And I'm like, he didn't just die. He didn't overdose. He overdosed in a hotel room and the people that he was with robbed him. They ran his oh, pockets. God, yeah. They went through his Blackberry phone. That's how old of a story this is. And they went through all the people that he owed money. And there's like, Hey, we're collecting money for Charlie. That's what it is. And they got as, they just got as much money out of them and just hit the road. So I hear this and I'm like fucking dude, I'm like 21. Right. I'm just like, Ugh! and so I'm like, I know the crack house that he's that he would stay at. Right. Because at the end nobody hung out with him except uh, for this me. It's like a beginning of a movie. At the end nobody would hang out with him except for me. Yeah. So the only way you would hang out crack with him, house Charlie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This, this, is, summer. this is like Travis's superhero <laughs> origin story. So, so One he, man, Travis, yeah, yeah. a comedian. Yeah, dude. So that he, guy's in a thunder, thunder crash. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. His friend Charlie. Hey, man, I got a problem. I, dick, I can't shake my demons. It's Charlie. Like, Charlie. <laughs> Heroin. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> the days in. Crack Den Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I'm like, I'm like a 10 box. You think I'm afraid of you? And so I found out. <laughs> I found out. That's ruining the. <laughs> We're ruining the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, my friend's fucking dead, dude. You know, I'm, I'm and then the girlfriend, <laughs> Travis, what's wrong with you? You don't know what I've been through, dude. You don't know anything. Yo. Tell me, cause you don't talk. Open that's up why, to me, Travis. Travis. Go ahead, leave like you always <laughs> do. You don't understand me, babe. I'm not <laughs> running anymore. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, dude. Okay, I hit this guy up two days ago. Still hasn't answered me from a fucking what a shit friend. You know, he's dead. So anyway, <laughs> fucking I go to this crack. The mother house. hugs you. He loved you like a brother, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do nothing stupid now. <laughs> he was, he was, it was always you. It was always you. <laughs> you were always the champ. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted you to have his medals. <laughs> <laughs> that he got from sports. I know it should have been me, Mrs. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> I think I think I did leave a medal at his yeah. house. I'm not fucking with you like a gold medal. I was like I, it was not for him. He didn't play jujitsu, he didn't fight at all, but I was like, I won it that weekend. I was like, dude. <laughs> and, and she was like good Trav I'll, I'll hang in his room with his other <laughs> poor shit and I knew there was like crack under the bed I'm like there's not just fucking medals in the cross sticks one movie room. this summer I don't even crack house the, Charlie I don't even want to tell the rest of the story <laughs> now. It's, 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 just, it's just off the rails it's just go on anyway so okay. in a world <laughs> I'm, waiting, I'm gonna do it again I'm waiting for Mick to be like <laughs> It's just Make vomited it, this thing. Like crack house charities. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go take Dennis Rooney on the road. <laughs> so <laughs> you're coming with me, Jamal. Why am I? Because I only have one black friend, and he has to be in the movie. <laughs> oh, God. Do I even have to tell a story? I don't want to tell a story. <laughs> it's up to I, you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's your show. The seriousness is just is just gutted from the stage. <laughs> People want to know to have an ending there. Go on. They yeah. do want to have an ending. So, so this is why you don't fight. This is why I don't fight. So I fucking so I, I hear he's dead. <laughs> Crack house Charlie too. They find <laughs> Travis with a beard and a hair. <laughs> he's sitting along yo, in the house. Wh- I said I wasn't doing this anymore, Mac. <laughs> 
How did you find me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> they keep bringing me back. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to put You want to avenge Charlie? Go find somebody else. <laughs> gonna, it's not about Charlie this time, Travis. It's his mama. She's <laughs> gone missing. <laughs> oh, All no. Right. Not Travis. I'll not put, Charlie's mama. I'll put together a team, <laughs> but they're going to be my team. Uh, these guys are younger. <laughs> they're faster, Travis. I'm Cocaine t- Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I find like all my team in like the, the <laughs> shit end of some dump bar. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we've been like, waiting for you. That's, that's Mac Truck Mac. <laughs> you got a one shot knockout. <laughs> we doing another job? <laughs> that's Mike the Mop. Why you call him Mike the Mop? Because he kills people with a mop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say lean up on Iron Five. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I I can't breathe. Trying. The this, mop. The mop's in my fall. <laughs> the mop's in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Travis is back, bigger, <laughs> better, <laughs> heroin. Right. So, because now we're now we're yeah, we gotta we gotta, <laughs> we, gotta, we, gotta <laughs> yeah, we gotta get Tony out of here. Sorry, so, Tony. So we go to the funeral, and I'm like, all right, dude. Like, w- I think I know where these people are. The people who robbed you. I'm pretty sure I know where they are. Yeah. They're at this crack house. So I'm like, I go to the funeral. I'm like, yo, you two guys. So my t- my friend, they were uh, D1 hockey players. So uh, I'm like, like the guys. I'm a priest. What do yeah, you yeah, want? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Confession. Yo, funeral director. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bears, come here. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking dude. So these two big hockey players come with me. Um, they pull up to the house, and I'm just like, you guys stay. He had like a the guy. The crack house had like a big open like main neon field, sign that said crack. <laughs> 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You know what? I'm gonna keep going because I want the interludes now. <laughs> is this the house? Yeah, I think it is. Hey, you looking for some crack? <laughs> crack for sale. Crack. 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 Open Open. Your crack now. Two for five, three for it's seven. Got, it's got like an order window like, in the back. <laughs> like a quick trick. You ain't no fuzz, is you? <laughs> <laughs> you wearing a wire? You ain't no lawman, is you? You gotta tell me if you're the yeah. law. <laughs> Goose it, boys. <laughs> So we go to this crack house, and I'm like, dude, if you see commotion in the window, like fucking, you know. I mean, it's a crack house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's bound to be something. They're not so sitting they're there watching. They're just checking the blinds every 10 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coming. They got a pretty good fucking yeah. security. Yeah. Well, I can't have these people find out I watched Downton Abbey. <laughs> they're like old Italian mothers. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I'm, you know what? I think I'm, I'm going to turn this into a bit now, now that you've just shined <laughs> new light on this. I'm not fucking with you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but you have to rewrite it with me. You have to help me. All right, we'll do it. Okay, we'll do do that. So, so I go knock on the door. It's locked, which is weird. And I'm like, all right, I need to get in. So I shimmy up this pipe. (laughs) I shimmy up this pipe and I just fucking punch through like the the screen door and I rip the screen door open on the second floor. Yeah. And I go in. They're all just like nodding out in the kitchen. And I'm like, yo, like, Fucking, where's what's it? Where's Doggerty? That's like his name. What's his name? Um, what's his I don't, name? don't say his name. I don't want to. Doggerty is his last name. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, Doherty? Like, like Irish? Do- Doggerty, yeah. Yeah, Doherty, big, Irish. Big, big yeah. fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, where's Doggerty? And they're like, dude, we're so sorry, but Charlie, but it wasn't our fault. And I was like, where the fuck is Doggerty? I like the man of like Mexican gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. they're just like, oh, we're so sorry about yeah, Charlie Holmes. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I was like, you guys are Mexican this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know, man. We told him to cut off, so, man. So, uh, so I'm like, I'm asking where Doggerty is. He, he's under the blanket on a couch, and he's like, I'm fucking right here, my right ear. <laughs> he pops up wearing the blanket as a yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> Who goes into my fortress? <laughs> so fucking. Who dares challenge Doggerty? So I, uh, so I fucking, I the walk dog, <laughs> the big dog. <laughs> so I walk over to him. I clear the table because it's all needles and like knives and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, in the scrap. What if he? Eh. Right, right. So right. I was like, clear the table, and I'm just like, oh fuck, I'm, I'm having words. I clear I'm, the table. I got pledge. Give me the wipe down. You, you think killing my friend is? You're gonna get it after. You really? As soon as I get the shop vac out, yeah, yeah, get a wet vac. All right, just let this thing. So um, so eventually I punch him. We start fighting. The whole crack house jumps on me. I just start fucking elbowing people. I'm fucking them up. Yeah. So I th- it gets out to the front lawn. My friends see a commotion. They hop out of the car. They bust on fire because they can't be outside. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, uh, the the homeowner's like, you know, man, I know Charlie's dead. You can't just come in here breaking into people's houses and doing that. And I'm having words at him. That's another call from the Doggerty, movie. Doggerty comes out. He's like, all right, round two. Like the 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 uh, the front lawn was like raised. You ever see one of those things? Yeah, yeah. It's like the sidewalks here, and the, so he's down. I'm down here. He's down there. I shoot a fireman, like throw him into the street. I get his I get his back, and I'm just whamming on him. One of the guys comes out, and my D1 hockey friend has like one of those like. 
kitty bats, like the aluminum yeah, baseball yeah. bats. And he just wait. I didn't see. It. I didn't see it. But all I hear is like wink, and he's like, <laughs> my crack legs. <laughs> 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 I gotta crawl for crack now? Oh, come on! I'm gonna be last online oh now. Nobody's God. gonna take me seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my crack! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> no fucking dude. Fucking so after we break his crack legs, <laughs> I choke him out, and then he's kind of like dazed in the street. I'm just like laying weight onto him. I'm small at this point. I'm still like I'm still competing. So yeah. I'm like I'm like 155. You know, I was fighting for other weight at the time. So it's not like much weight, but I'm just peppering him. <laughs> and so eventually the neighbors come out. Like the neighbors know it's a crackhead, thus the neon sign. Yeah. <laughs> um, then so they they all, you know, they come out and then we're like, we got to get out of here for the cops come. Right. So we peace out. You know, we end up going to somebody else's house. A party's going on like two week, two blocks down. So we just joined this party. And then the party knew about it. They're like, dude, like, fuck, we just heard. And we're like, just stay here, you know, whatever. So the next day I go back up to school. And then two weeks later is like a college break. Or something like a three day weekend. Okay. And so my dad hits me up and says, Hey, driving. You fucking, you planning on coming home? And I was like, Yeah, I was planning on. He's like, Yeah, don't come home. And I was like, Why? He's like, There's, there's like agents. There's like cops coming to the door to try and fucking arrest you. I, I'm not giving them nothing, Trev. I'm, just, I'm not telling them where you go to school. And I'm like, I don't think they would send a squad car up to Syracuse, New York for a fucking beat up crack like junkie. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, he's like, Well, don't come home. And I had to just like stay out. Wow. And I just couldn't come home for like three months because they knew he was a, he was a drug addict. So they weren't he was he's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. So they really weren't lifting fingers to like help him, but they were you know. But he was coming down to the station every day like I want this kid arrested. It's, 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 what balls as yeah. a crackhead to press charges? He, he it was him two sisters they all fucked each other they were all incest heroin addicts. Holy the shit! The Doggerties. I think one's still alive. He's dead. He became a male stripper and then died on the scene. Wow. Died like on the pole supposedly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, the other the other one was whoring herself what was after his character. <laughs> Big crackhead Joe. <laughs> 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 He's just gonna scratch his neck. <laughs> oh, Holy man. shit! What and a story. Then, yeah, and then uh, and then I and then I think that I don't think so. That whole thing, like you know, if you do martial arts, it, it's your hands are legal. It's not, it's not your yeah, hands aren't registered. That's a yeah. that's a I've fake been enough lie. Of those scraps. Yeah, 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 yeah that's a fake thing. Yeah. But it does look super bad in court. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If you like, they yeah. pull up your record, yeah, yeah. yeah. especially because <laughs> especially because he was like alive. your fight record. Like oh boy, yeah, yeah. Your honor never chumps. And I was like, I mean, if they really wanted, I was winning gold medals left and right. They're like, hey, he's pretty good. He's like, I wouldn't want to go to ground with him. And yeah, so it's just like yeah, and I was way smaller than him. So if he were standing in court like they'd be like oh that kid probably fucking mauled him right. <laughs> like, but uh yeah no and yeah, then man. that that from that point on was like you can't you can't just fight anymore you can't just yeah it's, it's not like high school college like high school that's the just, lesson right. here kids no, no. That's but, uh, yeah, right. we got to get out of here. So, yeah. Mick, you want to do any plugs? Yeah, Mick, you want to do some plugs? Uh, I mean, uh, I got some stuff coming up on different theaters around Long Island. but Like I, I uh, mean, it, socials or anything? Uh, Mick Thomas Comedy <laughs> on everything. And I'm on, uh, I got my own pod, two podcasts, Cheaper Than Therapy and The Man's ID Show. Uh, and if you're listening from Arizona, the Nile Theater on July 22nd, two shows. Awesome. Thank That's you. Uh, Trav, anything? Tomorrow I'm at Stand Up New York at 10. Uh <laughs> Then this Sunday, if you want to see me embarrass myself in a indie film, the premiere is at Belmore Theaters at six o'clock. So if you want, I'm on the supporting role. If you want to see me just embarrass myself, and then come in the theater and be like, "Hey, cocksucker, you suck," you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you can do that. Who um, do I see about my money back? Um, pff, not me, <laughs> Crackhead Joe. Other than that, Travis underscore Grant on Instagram and just Travis Grant on Facebook. Yeah, man, follow uh, Treading Water Podcast, uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I'm at the Logic, and I'll be here, Governor's uh, June 16th, uh, Giggle Room with uh, Mike Keegan, and uh, yeah, I think that's it, man. Yo, thank you, man. Thanks for having thank me. That's that was, was a lot of fun. Thank it was you, a bro. blast. Thank you, guys. Peace out. Thanks for yep. sticking with us. Later.